If you've recently set up a company in Dubai or are planning to set up a company in Dubai, then this is a must watch video for you because in this video, I would be talking about the five things to do after setting up a company in Dubai. Hi everyone, I am Karan Batra and I've been helping people set up companies in Dubai and the whole of UAE for more than 13 years now. And in this video, I would be talking about the five things you should do immediately after setting up your company in Dubai. Irrespective of whether your company is registered in Dubai or Abu Dhabi or Sharjah or Ras Al Khaimah or any other emirate of the UAE, you are required to do all these things. For the purpose of simplicity, I normally use the word Dubai, but the laws which I would be talking about apply not only to Dubai, but to the whole of UAE. The first thing which a person is required to do or which a company is required to do is to apply for the corporate tax registration. All companies in the UAE are now required to apply for corporate tax registration, irrespective of whether the company is registered in the mainland or the free zone. Irrespective of whether the company has started its business or not, they are required to apply for corporate tax registration. The application for the corporate tax registration is to be applied within three months from the date of company registration. So, say for example, if the company was registered on the 15th of August, then the application for corporate tax registration should be filed by 15th of November. After filing the application, the Federal Tax Authority will review the same and take some time in giving the approvals. It is important to note here that the law only states that the application for corporate tax registration should be filed within three months. The approval may come later as well. So in our example, where the company was registered on the 15th of August, the application is to be filed by 15th of November. Even if the application gets approved after the 15th of November, say the government gets the approval in December, it is fine because the law stipulates that the application should be filed within three months. All companies are also required to file their corporate tax returns annually within nine months from the end of the financial year. An audit is only required to be conducted if the annual turnover of the company is more than 50 million dirhams. Till the time the turnover of the company is less than 50 million dirhams, an audit is not required to be conducted and only the corporate tax return is required to be filed and filed annually. This is a new requirement and is applicable from the financial year starting after 1st June 2023. I'm planning to create more such detailed videos about corporate tax in the UAE, so make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Apart from the corporate tax registration, a person is also required to apply for VAT registration and this is required if the turnover of the company is more than 375,000 dirhams in the rolling 12 months. Applying for VAT registration is optional. That is, if the turnover of the company is less than 375,000 dirhams, but if this is more than this, then VAT registration is mandatory. However, if the turnover of the company is less than 187,500 dirhams in the rolling 12 months, VAT registration cannot even be applied for. And when we talk about corporate tax and VAT, it is important to understand what is the financial year in the UAE. Is it April to March or is it Jan to December or is it something else? I've explained this in detail in one of my previous videos and you can watch the same right here. Apart from corporate tax and VAT, all companies are also required to maintain a shareholder and UBO register. UBO basically stands for Ultimate Beneficial Owner, which basically means who is the real owner of the company. In some cases, people just put forward dummy directors or shareholders. The purpose of the UBO is to identify who is the real owner of the company behind these dummy directors or shareholders. Similarly, in case of corporate shareholding, where the shares of the UAE company are owned by another company, it is important and it needs to be identified as to who the real owner of the company is. The above three compliance requirements are required to be done by all companies. The next two compliances, which I would now be talking about, are required to be done only by a certain set of companies. The first one is the economic substance regulations which is also known as ESR, 
and requires that companies doing a specified set of business are required to notify the relevant authorities regarding the same and also submit an economic substance report to the notified authorities after the end of the year. This law was introduced in the UAE in the year 2019 and it is applicable to companies in the free zones as well as to companies registered in the mainland. The following type of businesses are covered under the economic substance regulations that is holding company business, headquarter business, banking business, insurance business, shipping business, investment fund management business, lease finance business, intellectual property rights business and distribution and service center business. Apart from the economic substance regulations, there are anti-money laundering laws as well in the UA which are also known as AML. These laws were introduced in the year 2020 and is applicable to both companies registered in the free zone as well as to companies registered in the mainland. The following set of businesses are required to register for AML and also required to report suspicious transactions. These business basically include brokers and real estate agents, dealers in precious metals and precious stones, independent accountants and corporate service providers. I hope you found this video useful and worth sharing with your friends and family. If you have any queries regarding company formation in the UAE, feel free to book an appointment with me through the link given in the description below. Thank you.